What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today, I am going to show you how to create a simple launch pad. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we want to do is create a new blueprint for this launch pad. So, in the content browser, let's right click and create a new blueprint class. In here, let's select actor, as it's going to be simply an object placed in the world. Let's name this BP underscore launchpad and open this up. Okay, so now it is time to add our meshes into this blueprint. Now it's going to be very simple and we are going to build this launch pad from basic shapes. So if I go to the content browser, as you can see, I have the starting content folder. If you don't have this folder, you can just go into add, add a feature content pack, content, select starting content, and then add it into your print. It essentially just adds some cool props into your print that you can use at any time. So in this case, if we go to shapes, as you can see, we have a bunch of shapes and we're going to be using the torus and also the sphere. The sphere, you can use the default one from Unreal, but the torus is not available by default. So with that said, let's go back to our launch pad. Let's click on the pan component and add a static mesh. Let's call this like the base and in static mesh, let's search for torus. Okay, so we have this over here. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is a bit more squashed by just making the Z.75. And now if I drag this into the world, we can start to see the shape of it. Now it's a bit too small, so we need to make it a bit bigger. So let's go ahead and just make it a bit bigger and more squished. And that's a bit better. I think it has to be even a bit bigger. So once again, a bit bigger and then squash it. And I think that's pretty good. So now, I'm actually going to just stretch it up a bit, move it down to here. And then we need to fill in the middle with essentially like a plane, right? So we have this kind of bouncy part. So right inside of our base, let's add a plane and simply name this to be something as the pad itself. And then let's move this a bit up around here and well, even a bit more, I would say. So we can change the snapping to five and then change the scale to lock it and putting like, you know, just a bit less. Uh, we could also change the snapping of this. There you go. Something like this. So now let's create two materials. Let's create a material for the um, base. And in this case, let's hold the three on our keyboard and press the left mouse button. This will create this color, which we can plug into the base color. That will click and change. Let's put in this to be around maybe yellow apply and save let's select this and click this button to apply it and then let's duplicate the base and name this the pad and in this case let's make it around this red apply save close and I select the pad and assign this material okay cool so now we have this pad over here which of course doesn't do anything at all I'm actually going to bring this even a bit more up. But basically what we need to do now is make sure that this goes ahead and, you know, impacts with the player and then applies an impulse. And this may also shrinks a bit with a quick animation. So on the component, let's add a sphere collision and this will serve as our trigger. So once the player enters into this trigger over here, it will detect it. So let's make it a bit bigger something like this and then let's scroll down make sure that the collision preset is set as overlap all dynamic and then on component begin overlap let's add an event so if the other actor is the player we will add an impulse so what we can do is simply do a little calculation which is cast to the class character now this is one which is generic on real every character we we'll use this class so we can simply do a launch character and that's it now on here we can apply a specific velocity in this case we want to apply it upwards let's put in like maybe like 800 just for now now this will work if i go and press play as you can see the character jumps i'm literally not pressing this base key but let's put this to be around maybe 2000 you know it has to be a bit more strong let's say Wow, okay, this is way better. Maybe too much. Let's put in like 1200. There we go. 
We also on top of this need to play a little sound so we know that the launch pad is working. So for this, let's go ahead and drag here and say play sound at location. And the sound, well, we have a couple of them. Let's put in the click on button and the location will be the get actor location. Now we don't have a sound attenuation, which is what gives the 3D effect, but that will be for another tutorial. So now we play a little sound. Of course, it isn't maybe the best sound for the jump uh, launch pad, but for now it will work. You can customize this as you want and add whatever values into this nose as you prefer. Now also for some of you guys who will be wondering why are we casting? You know, you've probably heard like things about it not being very, 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 you know, efficient. Well, the, the thing is that for this case, is for learning how to make a launch pad is more than enough. We will have a memory reference to the character class, but that's totally okay because our launch pad has to interact with our character. You could create an interface if you want and apply a custom event inside of the player and so on, but that is just not what I'm trying to teach in this tutorial. You can see other uh, tutorials about interfaces in my channel, but in this case, the purpose is to make a launch pad and a especially simple one. So with that said, we have everything done. Let's just simply make sure that the thing goes a bit down to make like a little, you know, uh, floating effect, let's say. Uh, we could even do it for the whole thing if you want. So in the event graph, let's drag from the last point and do an add timeline. And a timeline will allow us to transition between two values over time. Let's put in just like animation and double click. So here, let's just add a float track because a float is a number with decimal, so it'll be easier to transition. And let's put in here just the height, right? Because we're changing the height. The length is really how fast this happened, right? The duration. Let's put in like 0.3, so it's real fast. Let's right click at any point, add a key, set this to be 0, 0. Right click, add another key, set this to be 0.3 because when it finishes, and value 1. As you can see, now we have a simple linear um, increase over here. So then we can just do a lerp float, hold control, move this to the alpha, and then we will transition from zero to whatever value we want. In this case, we want to get, let's do the whole base actually, and let's set the uh, relative location. So the relative location is just the location relative to this blueprint, so whatever value is here. In this case, maybe I want to do uh, minus five or minus eight, so let's put in minus eight. Right click, split, plug into the Z because that's the only one that we want to change. And that's it. If you take a look, it will go ahead and decrease. Now it's hard to see because of the height. Maybe we could do it even more like minus uh, you know, 15 over term. But it's essentially decreasing over time. Let's put in like minus 200 just for that. You guys see it's very fast, but you can see it's happening, right? Just go ahead and make sure that this is back to uh, what was it, minus 10 or something. So, yeah, it's just whatever value you want, and it will work just like that. Of course, we need to go back into the original uh, one. So, let's put in like maybe 0 0.5 and then. At 0.5, we'll set this back to zero. Okay, and there we go. We have this done, and it's perfectly working. We could maybe increase it a bit, and we have a simple buckle launch pad. And the next thing that we're going to do is add a little particle effect when we jump, so we get that feedback for the player. So we open up once again the sorry content folder. You will find a particles, and we have a mini explosion. Now let's go ahead and just duplicate this explosion and let's name it P underscore just like launchpad. Open this up and what we can do is really just customize it just a bit so that it doesn't look so much like fire and more like just a explosion pretty much. There's a couple of things that we can change. For example, the fireball, what we can do is just uh, deactivate it and as you can see, it's more of a little highlight. We could even turn the light to be off if you want. And we got this little kind of effect. So now if we open up this launchpad with Ctrl E, we go back to our graph and right before we play our little animation, we can do a spawn, uh, what was it, uh, emitter allocation. 
And now what we can do is find P underscore launchpad. Now for the location, we'll be just the get actual location and then on pulling method auto release. So it will like be more performance friendly and then it works, but it's not very visible. That's because the scale has to be around 1.5, just a bit more. And then also we need to add an offset in the z-axis, so it's a bit higher. So maybe like 30, because right now it's inside of the uh, thing. So now, as you can see, it's less inside. Maybe we can put it to be 1.2 instead. But yeah, it's just playing around with values to get what we want. But now that looks a bit better. So that's it guys, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like video and subscribe to my channel. I will also find videos to 5 stars, so check them out. Now just, yes, thought I said, bye bye.